The title of our final project is Acrobatic Humanoid. This presentation will provide an overview of our final project, which involves controlling the humanoid robot pictured here. We first briefly introduce our project and then explain how we generate acrobatic motions for our humanoid robot and test these motions in our lab's simulation environment. We, will, we share the results we have produced thus far and then conclude with final thoughts and plans for future research. Matt and I both currently work in the biomimetics lab under Sangbae Kim. The lab is in the process of developing a fully electric bipedal humanoid robot on the same scale and base hardware as the Mini Cheetah. Presently, we have a prototype of the hardware as shown, which we have now added into our Cheetah software suite for simulation and robot control. Utilizing this foundation, we sought with this project to create an active demonstration of the humanoid robot in simulation such that when the hardware is built later this year, we will have a ready-to-go acrobatic controller to showcase the new robot's capabilities. Presently in simulation, we only have a functioning controller for a balanced stand with slowly moving arms and body height. Our project is the first functioning dynamic controller in this new hardware platform. The Mini Cheetah Backflip was one of the first abilities on its new hardware and demonstrated the capability of the all-electric quadruped platform. As for bipeds, to the best of our knowledge, the Boston Dynamics Atlas robot is the only bipedal robot capable of performing a successful backflip in hardware. Now that we are in the process of developing a new bipedal robot, we use this project as an opportunity to develop a more challenging successor to the Mini Cheetah backflip. To generate nominal acrobatic trajectories for the robot, we perform a trajectory optimization on a simplified 2D model of the robot. Using Roy Featherstone's rigid body dynamics algorithms, we generate the equations of motion for the floating base system and enforce them as a constraint at each time step in the optimization. Importantly, the trajectory optimization has a fixed terminal time, meaning that it occurs over a fixed duration. Furthermore, the durations of the stance and flight phases are also fixed beforehand. The backflip is the motion we are most interested in demonstrating on the humanoid, so here we briefly review how we generate this trajectory. The trajectory takes place over 0.79 seconds with 79 knot points. The stance phase accounts for roughly the first 35% of the trajectory, with the flight phase accounting for the rest. The cost function aims to minimize the deviation from a desired landing pose throughout the flight phase. In other words, we tell the robot the position and orientation in which we want it to land. We add a terminal constraint that states that the robot must make a complete backwards rotation. This optimization takes about a minute to solve. Just like for any other controller we develop, in order to test how it might perform on the actual robot, we test it in our simulation suite. Because the trajectory optimization generates purely open loop trajectories, in the simulation, we implement a linear feedback controller that, in addition to commanding the optimized feed forward torques, also does PD control of the joints so that they match the optimized joint state trajectories. Lastly, since the trajectory optimization ends in the flight phase and landing is not considered, we activate a simple whole body balance controller as soon as the robot touches the ground in an attempt to stick the landing. We will explain later why more work is needed when it comes to the landing. Using our 2D trajectory optimization, we were able to generate a number of interesting motions for the humanoid without changing the trajectory optimization framework. Simply by changing the cost function and terminal constraints, we were able to generate the backflip, dunk, and high jump motions shown here. This clip shows a slow motion comparison of the optimized trajectory compared to the simulated trajectory. Considering the model simplifications made in the trajectory optimization, the two look remarkably similar. This indicates that the 2D approximation of the robot is a valid one. We note here that this level of fidelity was achieved with the simplest possible feedback tracking controller. Here we see a side-by-side -side comparison of our humanoid backflip versus the Boston Dynamics Atlas robot backflip. Both robots launch off of a raised platform to complete the flip, but there are some noticeable differences. First, Atlas tucks its legs in front of its body while ours pulls them behind. Additionally, upon landing, Atlas's body isn't fully rotated while ours completes a full and potentially unnecessary rotation and stays much closer to its launch platform. On landing, Atlas takes a step to stabilize itself, something that our robot is not capable of performing currently, but we plan to explore in the future as it is a good strategy to regain balance by enabling optional stepping. With the landing controller enabled, the robot attempts to reconfigure its body back into a squatting posture as it did at the beginning of the flip after the trajectory optimization is completed. 
the whole body controller is reactivated and is commanded to hold the body position, roll, pitch, and yaw constant while reducing all joint velocities to zero. With some tuning, our naive landing controller is able to counteract the downward trajectory, but it has some noticeable issues. Firstly, the robot lands much more heavily on the left side due to an initial counterclockwise rotation on takeoff. Joint collisions are allowed and the knees hit, the left hip appears to separate from the body, and the left foot hyperextends after impact with the ground. Here we show the final result in real time. The robot is able to move from a controlled balanced standing posture into a crouch, perform the backflip, and roughly land on its feet, although it does not yet do so gracefully enough for it to regain control and stabilize back into a balanced stand just yet. Further work will be needed to complete that portion of the controller. To conclude, we successfully demonstrated the potential for our humanoid robot to complete a backflip from a raised platform. We certainly have a lot of new options to explore to make this a more robust controller that can hopefully be used in hardware later this year, but it demonstrates the potential of these techniques to do it and lays a good foundation for future work in the coming months. Fortunately, there is always more work to be done. Three of the biggest pieces of work we'd like to add in the future are the addition of time-varying LQR to our mid-flight control in order to correct for any anomalies in our flight trajectory and have a more consistent landing profile. Fix the issues with the robot rotating slightly on takeoff causing an uneven landing more heavily on the left leg, an issue we actually noticed to be present in our balance controller as well because of this work, and the creation of a much better landing controller that can more reliably detect the ground, stabilize itself, and transition back to a desired standing pose. Overall, we learned a lot from this project, but are excited for the new potential our humanoid robot can have from this work.